Hello everyone, this is Yorang Rajay from TE Electronics and in this video, I'll show you how to create the schematic for an inverting amplifier configuration and then obtain its output waveform through a simulation. So for this, um, I'll be using eSIM software on a Windows virtual machine. To start with, click on the shortcut icon for the eSIM software. So, once eSIM is open, you'll get this window. To create a new project here, you click on this icon on the top menu bar and name your project. Remember that your project name shouldn't have any spaces in it. Now, to start creating the schematic, click on the project title and then click on the first icon on the vertical menu bar. So, in this word space, you can use your mouse scroll wheel to zoom in or out. To start with inverting amplifier configuration, we'll place the op amp. For that, click on the place component icon, then click on your workspace. I'll be using the 741 model, which is located in the eSIM sub circuits folder. So, type in either the folder name or directly the model name in the text box. Once you have selected your component, click on OK and then click on the word space to place the component. To place the resistor, click on the word space again, type in resistor. Once you have your component, again click on OK. Click on the word space to place the resistor. Here you can also press the R key to rotate the resistor in any orientation. I'll place other resistors as well. Now to place a alternating voltage source, you have the place components option, then click on your word space again and this time type in sign. You'll also need the rail voltages which are DC sources, for that type in DC. You can directly connect the components at the nodes. Now to place the ground nodes, you select this icon, click on it and then click on your word space. Type in GND in the text box, then click on OK. You can now connect these components with the wire, which is this icon. To connect the components, click on the nodes. When connecting two wires, you should get a node like this indicating a proper connection. Here, pins 1 and 5 are not connected. So, to complete the no connection process, you click on this component and then add it to pins 1 and 5. Now finally to set the values of the components, hover your cursor over a component and then press V. In the text box, delete the name of the component and type in the value. The K indicates a kilo ohm value. For the values of the input resistance and the feedback resistance, you need to know the gain formula of an inverting operational amplifier configuration. So, um, the formula is VO equals minus RF by RI into VI. For a gain of 2, we will set the value of the 
input resistance to 1 kilo ohms and the value of the feedback resistance to 2 kilo ohms. Once we are done with the basic circuit, we also need to add a few more components for the simulation process. So first is a plot component which you will find in the place components menu. For that you type in plot in the text box. Select the plot underscore v1 model. We need to place this component at the output as well as at the input. Connect these components with a wire. To get labeled waveforms in the simulation output, you will also need to add labels. So click on the label icon and click at the nodes. Now name the label Now you are done with the circuit. To compile this circuit, we first need to go to the tools, then annotate the schematic. Click on annotate and click on OK. Next, click on tools again and go to the electrical rules checker option. Click on run. Now the only errors that it has thrown to us is a conflict problem and global label not connected problem. We can ignore these two types of errors, so we'll delete the markers for them. Then we go to tools again and then generate a netlist file. In this you need to go to the spice option and select the default format and then click on generate. Click on save. Now we are completely done with the schematic. Next. We can go to the main page of eSIM. Here, select, uh, select the project, right click on it and click on refresh. Next, go to the KING icon to convert it into an NG SPICE model. Here, we can enter the transient values of the alternating voltage source since we didn't give it any values in the schematic. So first, um, I'll have the runtime of the whole waveform. The start time I'll set as 0, step time as 10 milliseconds, and stop time as 1 second. Then, the source details is where you enter the specifications for the alternating voltage source. So 0 offset voltage, I'll give it an amplitude of 1.5 volts a frequency of 10 Hz and a delay time and damping factor of 0. Last part you need to do is go to the sub circuits and add the files of any specific models that you have used in your circuit. In my case it is LM741 model so I'll navigate to it and select the folder. Here you can see that the folder path has been added. Now you can convert it into an NG SPICE model. So the conversion is successful. Um, to go for the simulation, click on the third icon from the top. This has generated the Python plot window and the ng spice command window. We can close these two. It will also generate this inherent in-application plot where we can see our waveforms. To actually view our waveforms, we have this list of voltages given at the right hand side. We can select the voltages that we have labeled. So we have in and out and then scroll down and click on plot. We will get a basic plot which gives the um, input voltage in blue here which we can see is of 1.5 amplitude voltage as we have entered and the output voltage is 3 volts which means the gain is 2. Also we can see that the phase of the output is inverted with respect to the input. Now to make this plot better, we can add a title to it. Also we will mark the color, colors that, ha that have been plotted on the graph. So to do that we will select, uh, we'll select generate automatic legend, click on curves, then instead of label of 2, type in 
for our blue waveform and then select the other label which is our output waveform and type in out. The title has been generated as well as the legend. We can save this output using this icon. and the output will be saved. In a similar manner, as we have um, created an inverting amplifier schematic, you can also create a non-inverting amplifier schematic. In this case though, um, the formula for output voltage is different. It is given by VO equals 1 plus RF by RI into VI. So for a gain of 2, we need to modulate the resistor values accordingly. In this case, both will be equal given as 1K. Here we can even see the output for a non-inverting amplifier configuration, which is in the same phase with the input voltage. We can also plot other outputs for different input uh, voltages, such as this is 5 volts peak to peak or 2.5 volts amplitude. Similarly, for the non-inverting amplifier and other gains as well by changing the values of the resistors. So, in this case, for the inverting configuration, I have taken a 1 kilo ohm and a 3 kilo ohm resistor value. This gives us a gain of 3, which we can see here, as well as in the non-inverting amplifier configuration, we get a similar output with a gain of 3. Now to note that when the output voltage exceeds the rail voltage or the saturation voltage, we get a clipping of the output waveform. This has been obtained here for an input voltage of 10 volts peak to peak as you can see with a gain of 5. This has been um, inverting amplifier configuration and the non-inverting amplifier configuration in eSIM software. Thank you.